happy return to uh, this video. I'm gonna do the proof for the sine law, but I'm gonna do it for obtuse uh, triangles. Okay, so meaning um, that one of the angles, well, it can only be one of the angles, um, is obtuse uh, because since triangles have the 180 degree identity, when you add up the three angles, so only really one can be obtuse. But most of the proofs that are done are typically done on acute um, triangles. And the proof actually follows exactly kind of the same process. I can put up a link to the acute um, proof that I have done and kind of talked about that there. But here, I just wanted to add this video to kind of the grade 10 series uh, if students are going to be interested because I remember I was always kind of thinking, you know, does it also work for obtuse triangle or not? And the result is yes. Now, of course, it just depends on um, what information is given. Okay, so let's take a look and see how we can break down this particular sine law. Now, you can, of course, take the reciprocal okay, of that if you wanted to. Um, and let's see how it can be broken down. So here is your triangle. I'm going to uh, make the assumption. So your vertices. So notice it's commonly I'll just put A, B, C. The order doesn't really matter how you label them. Just please be consistent. Now, I also will refer to the vertices. So the angles at that vertex is going to be the angle A and then the angle B and then the angle C. Um, and then the opposite ones, so the A that you have, the B that you have, and then the C, those are just the lengths of the sides um, that are there. And actually, I'm just noticing right here. Okay, let me just swap this so that it's consistent. So within here, so this would actually be C and this would be B because we want them to be kind of opposite, right? Um, <clears throat> so that's what we have. Now, with this uh, piece of information, so our goal is to try to prove this, that these ratios actually hold when you're going to be doing the sine law. Okay, so first off, um, I'm going to kind of take this triangle and what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop. Okay, so just right here. So this is, I'm going to drop this line like so, okay, so all the way down. So it's basically a perpendicular line. And, you know, so this kind of goes hand in hand right here. All right. I'm going to call this the height, okay, and I'm going to call it height one, um, because I'm going to do kind of another item, okay, to make this whole proof work. So if I wanted to know what the height of this uh, triangle is, okay, so notice that this angle right here, Okay, so that's my obtuse angle. So that's the angle A. Um, I do know that the complement of that, so this angle right here, this would have been 180 minus the angle A, right? Now, what you have to remember here is, is that when you're studying, and this comes out from the kind of unit circle, you know, nicely, is that the angle that we have within here, so this 180, minus a, so the sine of that, is actually going to be the same thing as the sine of the angle a. Okay, so that's, um, that's what we have within here. Okay, so those two things are equal, and I'm going to use that. Okay, so now let's write down, okay, this. I want to try to write down and figure out this height. And what I'm going to do is, so it's going to be, let's say, sine of that angle. Okay, and this is what is going to be of this angle, 180 minus A. But this, again, is just equal to sine of A. And that is equal to, so the ratio of opposite over hypotenuse. And that's going to be H1 all over C. Okay, so from here, we know that H1 is just equal to C multiplied by sine of that angle. Okay, so sine of A. All right, so that's the first thing that I'll do. Now, the second thing that I'll do is, um, so this was basically for this, you know, this triangle. I'm just going to highlight it for you here. Okay, so I just took this triangle right here. This is where I got my opposite over hypotenuse. Now, I'm going to take exactly the same height, but now I'm going to write it out in terms of the hypotenuse being the length of A. So I'm going to take that. Okay, and I'm just using the trig ratios within here. Now, within here, so what I have is I have sine. Now, this is going to be of C. 
Okay, so that angle is equal to, again, opposite, so h1 all over a, okay? So that's what I have um, right there, okay? So that's my second one. And from here, you know, so what I have is that h1 is also equal to a times sine of c. And when you equate these two, so if I'm going to be equating these two, so what you notice is that you get a sine of c is basically equal to, um, that's going to be c over sine of a. Okay, so I'm just equating those two. So the h1 is equal to h1, okay, because those ones are equal. And now you can rearrange, so you can bring the a over, so you're going to get your sine over a is equal to sine c over c. And you have kind of the, uh, one of the components, okay, so right here, so you have this is basically equal to that. So you have that as your um, first parts of the sine proof. Now the second part, okay, so I'm going to um, kind of, let me copy this because now I want to bring about, okay, the b into the picture. So let me copy this. I'm going to drop it in here. I'm going to uh, just clean it up, okay? So this, I'm going to clean this up. Okay, so that is our um, a triangle, okay? So now it's cleaned up. And what I'm going to do is, okay, so I'm going to take it, and just so that you can kind of see, um, so this right there, let me try to rotate this thing in. Okay, so let's maybe do that. Okay, and I'm gonna just rotate it. So notice I'm gonna rotate it like this, just so that it looks a little bit better for us, okay? So I'm gonna rotate it like that, all right? Now, um, I know that the you know, Bs and As and so on, they're kind of on a slant, so let me rewrite them for you. So this was B, okay, so this is your B. So that doesn't change. For us, I just changed the kind of orientation how we see this. This is my A. This is going to be my C. Okay, so that's C. Okay, but it's still the same triangle. And I'm going to do now exactly the same thing, um, but I'm going to drop the height. Okay, so now the height of this one. Okay, so let's say I'm going to drop it from right here to here. And again, the reason is because I want to create this 90 degrees here. Okay, so that I can use the trig ratios. Now this height is not the same uh, because I rotated the triangle, so or most likely it's not the same. So I'm going to call it h2. Okay, so that's the height of that. And now I'm going to use exactly um, the same kind of trick. So I'm going to take, you know, so first let's take this triangle right here. Okay, and now I'm going to write. So this is going to be sine. Okay, of um, 180 minus, uh, minus a, which is a sine of a. Okay, so that's what this equals. And that is going to be opposite um, over hypotenuse. All right, so it's going to be h2 over b. Okay, that's for this triangle. And that again, okay, it's going to give me h2 is equal to b times sine of a. And now let me erase this and take, now we're going to take this triangle. So I'm going to take that triangle, okay? And I'm going to discuss it with respect to the angle of B. So now that angle of B, which is going to be sine of B equals, and again, opposite over hypotenuse. Now hypotenuse is A. So this equals H2 equal to A times sine of b. Now again, so equating these two, so what I'm going to get is b sine of a is equal to a sine of b. And now I'm just rearranging, so sine a over a is equal to sine b over b. Okay. And now, you know, if you're going to be bringing in what we had shown here, that sine A over A is just also sine C over C, and you have your sine law, okay, for the obtuse. 
Um, so that's kind of how you can uh, prove this. All right. So if you were wondering if it also works for obtuse, um, it is true. All right. Okay. Thanks for watching. See you in a future video. Bye, everybody.